Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of That's Not an Error. What is this series? This is the series where I usually go on eBay and I find people selling things that they're calling errors that just aren't. Or they're finding fancy serial numbers that they want a ton of money for that are just plain worthless. People will go out of their way to try to tell you how rare and how valuable something is. But the funny word is value. If they want to say that it's valuable, that means it has value, especially when they say it has value over face value. The word value is right in over face value. If there was actual value, then they would easily buy the stuff for half of that value. If they say a note is worth $20, that's what it's worth. It's worth 20 bucks, which means if they bought mine for 10, they could turn around and sell theirs for 20 and double their money. That's what value means. So if they are unwilling to buy what they say at half of their own listed price, well, what does that tell you about the value of the note? It tells you that they aren't worth anything. It tells you that this is a hype man. That's what it tells you. All right, so what do I have this week? I'm going to apologize right now for how long this video is going to be because I found a psychopath. Yes, I did. I found a true psychopath. I'm not going to go through our entire conversation. Frankly, my phone does not have enough storage. Um, this is what I will show you. Let me just scroll down here into the comments section. I'm going to show you right here. This was my comment to him, okay? And here's his reply. That was his reply. <laughs> then I, I, I answered back and he replied again. So I replied, <laughs> I gave up after three sentences and uh, he replied again. And then he replied again. <laughs> I'm dealing with a psychopath. Yes, I am. Don't worry, I'm not going to read all this. Not going to do that to you. Not going to torture you at all. No way, no way am I going to do that. Um, his video is four minutes long. Four minutes and 31 seconds. That's how long his video is. I will torture you and make you watch that video. And I will go through it step by step. And I will read to you the comment I sent him. And I will be kind enough to tell you that his very first comment, as is, look, that's the entire page there. And as we keep scrolling down, uh, in there, he has 15 questions. Um, and he wants answers. <clears throat> you got it, bud. <laughs> you got it. All right, so let's start off this way. Let, let's start off by going through his video and see what's going on. Now, I had, once again, I had no intention of doing a video on this. I was watching YouTube, and this popped up in my feed, and I was intrigued by the title. How much money can I make searching $1,000 bills? Okay, that's kind of intriguing. Yes, sure, absolutely. How much money can I make? What does that title imply? That title implies that he actually made money, right? That, that, isn't that how much money can I make? I mean, he's, he's trying to say that by him searching these $1,000 bills, he showed some type of profit. That's what he's saying, okay? So let's watch, and I will be all over this. Um, I will apologize if any ads happen to pop up, but, uh, you know, we'll do what we can. And this video will be hunting for $1,001 bills. We'll be looking for star notes, web notes, Joseph W. Bar notes, fancy serial numbers, birthday notes, low and high serial numbers, printing errors, older bills, high suffix notes, you name it. We have 10 bundles of 100 bills. We'll be hunting one bundle at a time with a recap afterwards. We'll also be appraising all the finds as we go. The appraisals will be based on recent eBay sales minus face value and will not include expenses for fees and shipping. Okay, so the appraisals that he's going to list are going to be based on what people bought them for on eBay. That, that's that's how he's getting his values, okay? So let, let's understand that that means the values that he's discussing 
are based on eBay. Now, not just eBay, but eBay sales, actual sales, okay? Now, you guys have heard me say many, many times that just because somebody pays $10,000 for a $1 bill doesn't mean that every $1 bill is worth $10,000. You can sell anything to anyone for any price you want. There doesn't even have to be a reason why the person buys the note. They could simply... They, they could be a business and have to spend so much money on expenditures so they'll spend $100 on something that's worthless just so they can do it. Um, there, there's so many different reasons why somebody... You could have two people working together trying to run up the price. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't make a complete list of why somebody would buy any particular note for any given price. What I can say, though, is... He is simply using the sold prices on eBay to determine value, which isn't the way it's supposed to go. In fact, let me help you out on this, okay? I also decided to look up some sold items on eBay just to see what they were worth. So we're going to start here. This is a sold item. This item sold, okay? Uh, it sold for $5, and they had free shipping, okay? What is it? It's a $1 bill that uh, somebody took a bingo dauber and stamped. Okay. They call it um, uh, with you know, a fancy serial number, quad doubles, twos, five, fours, fives, and ones, error note. They're calling it an error. And if we scroll down here, the note also has some kind of ink error is what he says. So apparently, if I take a $1 bill and stamp it with a bingo dauber, my $1 bill is now worth $5. Because here is an eBay listing of a sold item, a $1 bill with two bingo dauber stomps that's sold for 5 bucks. So once again, this isn't me reading it out of a book. This is an actual eBay sale. So because it's an actual sale, we can take it that this is worth five dollars so go out and buy yourself a bingo dauber for a buck at, at the dollar store and start stamping your dollars because apparently according to ebay sales this is worth five bucks what else do we have this is a partial teller stamp this is a sold listing they called it an ink smear on a u.s dollar it is not it is when a bank teller stamps a strap and misses this particular one was a round stamp you can see straight up and down here, that's where the strap was, and that part went over the strap, causing note to get on or causing ink to get on the note. That's all that is. But apparently you can go to your bank and say, Hello, Mr. Bank Teller, can you stamp this strap of notes and miss so that part of the ink goes there? Because apparently if you do that, not only will it sell on eBay for five dollars and ninety-five cents, because this is a sold listing. Once again, I'll show you. It's a sold listing. Scroll up to the top. Uh, listing sold. So this is a, that was a sold listing. Not only did the guy get six bucks for it, but he also charged three dollars and forty-five cents for shipping. So once again, all you have to do, apparently, you don't have to search any notes at all. Go to your bank, have them stamp the bill, and now it's worth six plus shipping. You don't believe me? Fine. We'll go one more. Here's another bank teller stamp from what, Guardia World Los Angeles CVS. Something like that. Is that what it says? That's clearly a bank teller stamp. Okay. Or a CVS when they counted the money and then stamped on there. Um, who did it? And once again, this is another sold sale. Uh, so this is $3.95 with free shipping. Nice. So all I have to do is go to any bank or any store that stamps their notes like that and just by getting them stamped I can make four dollars because that's what they're worth should we continue sure let's see what else we got here here's a note that somebody folded up really thin and then stepped on and dragged across the floor to get it all dirty if you do that you can <laughs> apparently you can sell this note for five dollars plus four uh, three dollars and 86 cents shipping so if you get a $1 bill, fold it up really thin, step on it on a hard floor, and drag it across. That'll put these lines on there. And uh, according to eBay, that's worth $5. Is there more? You better believe it. Remember, these are all 
actual sales. This was interesting. This note, somebody sold for $40. And they are calling this an error because it has no green on it. The funny thing is, is when you zoom in, you can see all the lines where the seal was. Uh, the gray lines in the background are all broken. You can't see very well because it's a hideous picture. But it's clear that someone used a chemical to remove the green seal and the green serial number. And if we go on this side, they, they remove the serial number on this side as well. And they looks like they tried to remove part of this. Um, anyway, this particular note is just trashed, but it's been chemically altered. And you guys are going, well, how can you say it's chemically altered? Well, let's look at the back of the note. Normally the back of notes are green. <laughs> this one's gold. That's a chemical reaction to the ink. So yeah, this note has been chemically altered. That's how that got removed. So yeah, if you chemically alter a note, apparently you can sell them for $40 because according to eBay, a chemically altered note that you decide to call an error um, is worth 40 bucks. You can make a lot of money doing that. Take a strap of 100 notes, chemically alter them. Um, now you're, you're going to make four grand because that's what they're worth according to eBay. And uh, yeah, so we'll stop there. So yeah, when you're looking at eBay for prices, once again, those were all sold listings. Sold listings do not determine value. Just because someone paid that for all of those notes I just showed does not mean any of those notes are worth anything over face value. It means somebody got suckered. Somebody got scammed. Somebody got scammed bad in, in some of those cases. Anybody who purchased those notes will never see a penny over face value when they try to resell them. Why did they buy them? I don't know. I have no idea. But will they ever get any money for them? No, not at all. All right, so... He uses eBay sales, you know, done sales to determine value. And I just showed how that's not necessarily accurate. All right, so let's go. And as a disclaimer, this video is not intended as financial advice, but it's for entertainment and educational purposes only. Okay, entertainment and educational purposes only. So he's not a financial advisor. Through the course of the dozens and dozens of pages of chat, he said that he's an investor and a treasure hunter. That's what he called himself, okay? And that this is for educational purposes only. So rather than educating us as to how many of these are printed or anything about condition or anything like that, uh, he decides just to tell us how much his notes that he found are worth. And if you like this type of content, please hit that like, share, and subscribe. And now, let's get started. All right, bundle number one, it's time to play. All right, the first bundle gave us a couple of finds. Here we have a common startup with a 3.2 million print run. This note would sell for around $2 over face. Okay, I'm going to stop right here because later on we're going to come back to this note. Uh, this is a common star note. That's what he said. It's a common star note that sells for $2 over face value. That, that, that's what he said. Okay, not a rare, a common star note. That, that's his line right there. Uh, he, he said it sells for $2 over face value, which means it sells for 3 bucks. okay? I believe in my comment, I said he called star notes worth $3 over face value. And he went off a full paragraph about that. If $1 in the price of an item, if $1 in the price of a collectible, a true collectible, if $1 is a make or break deal, you have issues. I mean, you better reevaluate what you're purchasing if $1 uh, changes whether it's a good deal or a bad deal. Let, let's just start there. Okay, now, another thing is we're talking star notes. Now, we all know that 2021 is going to be the last year for star notes. And most people save star notes anyway. We know that. Star notes are easy enough to find. If you watch anybody who actually strap searches... What do they tell you star notes? Are? How often do they find star notes? Their goal is to find one, one star per strap. So if they have 10 straps, they have 1,000 notes, and they're hoping to find 10 star notes total. That's one out of every 100 notes is a star note. That's 1% of all the notes, okay? So if you have a $100 bill, go to the bank, buy a strap. You're probably going to find a star note. Better yet, go to the bank with a $1 bill and go to the teller and explain to them, look, I'm looking for a star note. 
and they will probably take the ones that they have in the register and go through them and go, oh, here's one, and you can just buy it for a dollar. Okay. Now, also probably, that is going to be a common star note because that's what a common star note is. It's the most likely one you're going to find. So you can go to the bank and get a star note for face value. If you can go to the bank and get one for face value, then how does it have any additional value? It doesn't. Now, once again, with this year being the last year that they're going to be printing star notes, that means with no more star notes going into circulation, star notes may eventually start to become harder to get. Well, do we have anything to compare? We do. In 1988A, 1993, and 1995, they had what are called web notes. Now, a web note... That was an experimental note done on a very special press. And through the course of those three years of printing, they only printed 300 million of them. Just 300 million. That's it. And after that printing was done, you know, people, of course, knew that that was it. And they hoarded them. They, they gathered them up as much as they can. That was in 1995 was the last time that those were printed. It's currently 2024. So we're talking almost 30 years have gone by. And in 30 years, how much have web notes gone up? The average web note right now sells for about $15 after 30 years. And there was only 300 million of them. Now you hear people talking about print runs of 3.2 million. Sometimes a particular reserve on a particular print run will do three to 10 print runs of an individual star note. If they do 10 print runs of 3.2 million, that's 32 million right there. Do you know how many billions of star notes are circulating? Yes, exactly. So we're not talking 300 million, we're talking billions of star notes. So how long is it gonna take for those billions of star notes to actually be worth $15. It took 30 years for 300 million web notes that most people didn't even know about. Here we're talking about stars. Everybody knows stars. What other fact do we have about stars? Well, we've got this. This is Paper Money of the United States. This is a price guide. Okay, and this is the 23rd edition. This came out like two months ago. They put this out once every once every couple years, but this one is fairly recent. Now, when I look at one dollar bills, that's where we're at here. One dollar bills. Um, here's let's see. There's 2017A, 2017A, and you can see they don't even list prices. They just put current because they're still producing. Well, they aren't producing the 2017As at this point. They're producing the 2021s, which they list it as current. Okay, but what you're going to find is when you start looking through all of these, the only number that's listed there, you can see $3, $10, $3, $10. Uh, that's for the 2017. Uh, our notes that are choice 63, okay? Read that as uncirculated. 60 is uncirculated. And being graded 60 isn't even good enough. They'd have to get at least a 63 grade, Okay. And at, th at that point, you have a note that's worth $3 when it's choice and circulated. Now, if we start going deeper into the years, here's 2013. Once again, only list choice and circulated. Here's another 2013 choice and circulated. Here's 2009. Uh, they list a price for choice uncirculated. Those dashes there, these dashes here, would be the price if it was graded a 40. Not a 20, a 40. Let's look at 2009. Bunch of dashes. And then finally here, here's one ultra rare star note that they've got listed for a chunk of change. One. Here's one for $8. That's a 2009. Okay. And once again, you're talking a grade 40. Let's look. Is that a grade 40? Or is this just no, a circulated note? Next up is a birth. All right, that was just a circulated note. So we'll go to the next one here now. Once again, he never, ever discusses, um, never discusses condition. And if you're a collector, condition is everything. 
okay? So if you have a star note that is from 2009 and newer, unless it's in perfect condition, it doesn't have any value. Why? Because there are hundreds of millions of them. That's why. Currently, there are hundreds of millions of them. How many are there going to be in 30 years? Probably still hundreds of millions of them. So there's not really any value. Now, I'm a collector, and I think it's fun to find star notes. I save star notes, not because I think they're worth a ton of money, but I find it neat. I actually enjoy the hobby. So even though they are no longer printing star notes, only the ultra-rare star notes, you're talking under 250000 on a print run, only those are going to be worth anything in the near future. Uh, you're going to have to go decades before you see values in any of these others. And probably further than that, you're, you may have to go generational to actually see values because there are just so many of them. All right, so next up, what does he have? Birthday note, June 10th, 2012. All right, he has a birthday note, June 10th, 2012. I am happy to see that it's an actual birthday note. It does list 06 for June, the 10th, and then 2012. Let's see what he has to say about this. It's in fairly good condition, although it does have a small piece of the edge missing here at the top center. In the condition it's in, it'd probably sell for around $11 over face value, if so. All right, so he says that this birthday note is $11 over face value. <clears throat> that implies that it's worth $11 to me, and it's worth $11 to you, and it's worth $11 <clears throat> to everyone, because that's how value is, okay? Um, what you can sell it to an individual person, well, sky's the limit. But what's it worth in the general market? <clears throat> well, it's a birthday note. There are 365 days in the year, okay? I don't have to tell you guys that. So the odds of finding a person that was born on June 10th is 1 in 365. But then we have to associate the year. And let's assume, even though the average lifespan is under 80 years old, uh, let's assume 100 years. Let's go 100 years. That means with 365 days times 100 years, you are talking 36,500 potential birthday notes that are floating out there. And those are just the different numbers, not, not the numbers that were printed. Those are the different birthdays that you can find. Which means every single time you find a birthday note, you essentially have a 1 in 36,500 chance of finding the person that has that exact birthday. Then you have to hope that they're a collector, and then you have to hope that they didn't already find their own birthday, and then you have to hope that they will buy it from you. Which means, is this worth, uh, whatever he said, 10 to $20? It's worth 10 to $20 to the person whose birthday that is, if you ever find that person. So does this have any actual value? Well, when you have to go that far and with that many ifs and that many question marks, once again, if you run across that person, that one person, yeah, yeah, I bet it has value to that one person. But for the other 364,999 or 36,499 people, no, it doesn't have any value. Is it neat? Sure. But value? No. Um, let's see. What else? It's old as a buy now listing. Well, we have a couple of finds already. Let's hope there's more in bundle number two. Okay, the second bundle gave us three finds. The first one is a birthday note to November 30th, 1953. So once again, another birthday note. We just discussed birthday notes. It's worth money to that person. That's it. That's not something that's recognized throughout the community. No one is going to pay you anything for that note other than that person. So, no. Three. It's not in too bad a shape and will probably sell for around $14 over face value if sold as a buy it now listing. Next up, we have a fancy trinary, all zero. All right, trinary. Here, let's let him finish his thought. Rows, eights, and nines. It has good eye appeal, so I pull it out. It would sell for around $2 over face value. $2 over face value on a trinary. It's a trinary. <sighs> Here we go. Fancy, the green guy to fancy serial numbers. And when we start talking about trinaries, let's see if I can find it in here. I'm going to, I think I know what page it was. Okay, bookends, 
49, was it 45 maybe? Binaries and trinaries, here we go. Single, dual repeater, dual bookend, tri repeater bookend, radar bookend, those are bookends. We don't want bookends, we want a trinary. Where'd it go? Okay, here we go. Trinary. Now, when I talked to this person, when I wrote to this person, uh, he thought I was harping on this, which is over face value by this book. I don't care what this book says for the for the value, okay? Because that's not important. What is important is the person that wrote this book, uh, R.B. and Alan, when they got together and wrote this book, they did the math, and that's what I care about. So, once again, here's a trinary, and they tell you exactly what a trinary is. And then you have to remember that a serial number is based out of 96 million possible combinations. Uh, we'll call it 100 million just, for, just to make it easy. There's 100 million different combinations for the numbers. And this number here is the reoccurrence. So of every possible numeric combination that they put on a note, there are 695,220 trinaries. I'm going to say that again. For every single numeric combination, all 100 million of them, 695,220 are trinaries. We are not talking about a common star note from 300 and, or from 300 and, or 3.2 million. Uh, we're talking about 695,000, okay? When you talk about rare star notes, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, he's talking about notes that are 600,000 for his rare star notes, which isn't even rare. But anyway, here's 695,000 for trinaries. And once again, that is per print, okay? Per print run. Here's a stack of notes. I spent three hours going through this just so I could do this. This is a 2021, and it happens to be from Boston, so it's an A. So you've got the A as part of the serial number. Then, when they print the notes, they go from 0 all the way to 9600000. So they print all the numbers there, and they put an A at the end. The A at the end represents the first run-through of the numbers. Once they run out of numbers, then they change the A to a B. So this note, this one note, represents approximately 100 million notes. Here is a note from New York, same year, 2021. You can see it's a New York note right here by this B, and you can see the serial number starts with a B, also corresponding with New York. They use the same numbering, but on this note, they ran through all the A's, which means the BA block had almost 700,000 trinaries. Then they did the BB block, which also had 700,000 trinaries. Then they did the BC block, which also had 700,000 trinaries. Then this is the BD block, which also had 700,000 trinaries. So that means that 700,000 here and this note here, um, you're talking five different print runs at 700,000 a piece. These two notes represent three represent 3.5 million trinaries printed and that's just what these two notes represent let's keep going still in the same year 2021 c note they went through it three times here's a d note they went they made it to e that's five times here's an e with just one time through a, a g with one time through H with one time through, L had four times through the numbers. And then we start getting into other years. This is the 2017. And once again, A had one time through, and this is just all the notes that I found out of a thousand. So there are more than these. I'm just, what I can prove, that's what I'm showing. So this had one, this had uh, B goes four times through, and then as you start going, I'm just going to flip through these because this stack is massive and there's no way I'm going to count. But look at those end letters showing how many times they had to go through. I mean, some of these get extreme, okay? And once again, you're talking every single one of those letters. Here's P. I mean, every single one of those letters, 700,000 per letter. 
and every single one of these notes is a different print. It's a different uh, Federal Reserve branch or a different series. Here's W. Okay, I'm still going. You know, here these were at 2006 on the notes here now. J. Here's an I note. I mean, it's insane the total number. If we were just talking about these notes, what did I have here? I, I don't even remember how many I had. But I, I counted up all the different blocks that I rep, had represented here, and there was over 385 different blocks. Every one of those 385 different blocks has 700,000 trinaries. Trinaries are worthless. They're easy to find. This guy says he goes through 10,000 notes at a time. So why doesn't he tell you how easy they are to find? because he wants to convince people that they have are worth money. Sometimes, when you've got uh, high print runs like that, I want to show you one little thing that I got here. Here's a print run. They made it all the way to Y. Now, they never use O, because that looks too much like a letter. But we all know that there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Y would be the 25th letter. And with, that, with them not using O, that means they went through all of these numbers 24 times. So this one note represents 24 different blocks. And each of those blocks had 700,000. So 10 times that would be 7 million. 20 times that would be 14 million. Oh, and we still got four more blocks. And that's just this one note representing that many trinaries. No, trinaries are worthless. Now, now that I've dis discussed trinaries, I want to show you some fun stuff. Where is it? Is this it? Here it is. Let me close this for just a second. Here is my box of trinaries. Every single note in here is a trinary. Every single one. Every single note. Starting here, I mean, I can just I can pull them out, just random grabs. It's not important. What is important is there's roughly 1,600 trinaries in this box. Here, you want to see some more? Here, we'll just random note, trinary, random note, trinary, random note, trinary. Want to see some from up front? Sure, here. Trinary. Why do I have 1,600 worthless notes? Well, a couple years back, I thought there are 96 million combinations of numbers. 96 million. What are the odds that I could actually find two notes with the exact same serial number? That would be almost impossible. <laughs> but I decided I was going to try and see if I could do it. And uh, turns out I was able to. Let me show you what I got here. I save trinaries so that I can go like this. 6838338. Six eight three eight three three eight eight. I found a matched pair. Not only did I find a matched pair with trinaries, I then started saving quads. And here is a matched pair of quads that I found in circulation. I didn't go on eBay and buy these. I didn't go looking on eBay for fancy serial numbers and trying to match them. I found these in circulation. I did it the hard way. I did it myself. Okay. Then I stumbled across this pair where not only are the numbers the same, so are the block. I mean, you want to talk about rare? You want to talk about an impossible find? There it is. Found in circulation. So that is why I save trinaries. Not because trinaries are worth anything, but I actually enjoy the hobby. I enjoy trying to find these pairs. And I can take that money to the bank anytime I want and turn it back in. It's a wonderful savings account. It's a horrible investment because... The way inflation goes, my money buys me less. But that doesn't change the fact that they are there. All right, so trinaries, 100% worthless. Not worth anything at all. 
And here we have another fancy trinary 942, 44, 942. Yeah, forget condition. It's written on. Yeah, condition doesn't matter, apparently. Um, because when there's 700,000 per block and there's, uh, <laughs> like I said, in that group, 385,000 or 385 different blocks. Yeah, why would condition matter when there's literally tens, if not hundreds of millions of them floating around? Two. It's somewhat of a bookends note with the 942s being the bookends. This would sell for around $2 over face value. No. Now let's worthless. move ahead to bundle number three. Well, bundle number three wasn't any fun at all. Let's try out bundle number four. All right, the fourth bundle gave us a couple of finds. The first one is a famous date note, April 23rd, 1869. If I'm going to stop right there. Famous date note. Uh, in the wrong order, 1869-04-23. So it's in the wrong order, which means... This is a struggle to make something worth value. That that's all this is. Um, it's supposed to it's supposed to go month day year, not year month day. So this would be an almost note. It's almost what he's saying it is. It's close, but it's not. So it, it's not even what he says it is. Secondly, before he says what it is, what is April twenty third, eighteen sixty nine? What is it? Why does that day stand out to you? If this was 1776-0704, well, there's a date that would stand out to you, right? Uh, what if it was 09-11-2001? There's a date that stands out to you. What if it was 1207-1941? There's a date that stands out to you. But this is, <laughs> this is April 23rd, 1869. What happened that day? Well, you know, you can Google what happened on any day ever, ever, and find something. <laughs> you know what happened on this day? Let's see. If you're a baseball fan, you're going to love this one. This is the date when the Cincinnati Red Stockings became the first openly professional baseball club. It's a great find. It would probably sell for around $19 over face value on eBay. Uh <laughs> okay, so he's got a he's got a historic date note for a random historical fact. Uh, in other words, like I said, every single day you can go back and find some random historical fact. And his date note isn't even in the correct order, and we aren't even going to talk about condition. All right, next. Up next is a note with five trailing fours in a row. I typically only keep notes with at least five of the same number in a row, unless they are trailing nines or zeros, which are a little bit more scarce. Trailing nines and trailing zeros are not any more scarce than trailing fours or leading fours. Uh, so the odds of finding... A specific number seems difficult, but there are just as many quad nine or uh, five in a row nines as there are five in a row fours. So no, it is that that's a lie. That that's trying to make a huge number smaller by a factor of nine or by a factor of ten, because he's talking about one particular digit out of ten and saying that one digit is worth more. No. Secondly, what are we talking about here? He's talking about having f uh, five fours in a row. Why is that worth something? Why would that be worth something? Well, there's something called a solid. And a solid would be if this was all fours. There's only one way to make a solid out of 96 million bills. Uh, a solid of all fours. You can have a solid of all ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, and eights. So there are eight total solids you can find. You can find solid nines on much older bills when they did print runs a little higher. But for the most part, a solid, there are only eight different versions per 100 million notes produced. That means a solid is worth money. It's worth a lot of money. But sometimes it's just too difficult to find those. So some people decide to settle for seven of a kind. Seven of a kind, also very difficult to find, also very rare worth a little bit of money. But since those are so hard to find, maybe we can go down to finding just six in a row. Here, six of a kind. Well, six in a row is even harder, so we'll go six of a kind. You know, just not together. Because we can't find seven of a kind, and we can't find a solid. And, well, okay, you're having difficulty finding your six in a row? All right, so let's make it even easier. Let's go to five in a row. Uh, no, <laughs> this <laughs> that's this is one person just going on and on trying to make it easier and easier to find something in their searches, because the stuff that's actually valuable is hard to find. Being hard to find is what makes it valuable. 
why would somebody spend anything on this note when they can get six in a row for virtually the same price? But why would you want six in a row when you can get seven in a row for 25 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever the case is for that? Then you have something that's actually rare versus something that you're going to find all the time. This note would sell for around $6 over face value on eBay. It's a good find. Okay, now let's play with bundle number five. Okay, the fifth bundle gave us a semi-rare star note with a 640,000 print run. It all... Okay, here he says semi-rare, okay? And he says in his things that he never uses the word rare in, in all his comments. Uh, so there, he said rare there, so... Also has a somewhat cool serial number with multiple pairs of the number 42. It would sell for around $8 over face value. Okay, once again condition irrelevant because you can see all the creases there and it has a semi-interesting serial number uh, no it doesn't no zero three four two four two four two no you know what that is that's almost that's almost a super repeater if it was four two four two four two four two that would be a super repeater that would be worth money this is almost a super repeater which means it's almost worth money it's a good find and next up, we have a note with six of a kind fives, and it's six of a kind fives. Once again, for the person who can't find seven or eight, let's do six of a kind, not even six in a row. Really close to being seven in a row. A note like this would sell for around nine dollars over face value. It's really close to being seven in a row. <laughs> Man, I wish that six or zero had been a five. That would have been sweet. Well, we're halfway done, and it's been a great hunt so far. Let's see what button number six has in store for us. Well, bundle number six had absolutely nothing in store for us. Now let's hope for a lucky bundle number seven. All right, the seventh bundle gave us one find. It's another semi-rare startup with a 640,000 print run. It does have a little bit of writing here on the left, so it does hurt the value a little bit. It's probably worth around $3 over face value. Okay, so here is a star note from a print run of 600,000 with writing on it. Okay, so the condition is, uh, you already destroyed the condition by writing on it. it he calls it a semi-rare star note, and he says it's worth three bucks. Kind of like how he said trinaries are worth three bucks, except this is out of a print run of 600,000. And trinaries, every single block is out of 700,000. So once again, how's a trinary worth anything if if we're just going by his own numbers? This is one of 600,000, and it's worth three bucks. So a trinary that's, there are 700,000 printed for every single block. How can that possibly be worth anything? Is that bundle number eight I see? Let's take care of it. Okay, the eighth bundle gave us one fun. It's a star note with an 800,000 print run. It's not considered super rare, but you don't see these very often. This would sell for around $3 over face value. So $3 for face value for a non-rare. It's not a common, but it's... 800,000 print run is not a short run. Well, it appears bundle number nine has seen better days. Let's see what it has to offer. Well, bundle number nine was as productive as it was pretty. Here we have bundle number 10. Let's try to go out on a high note. Okay, the last bundle gave us one last find. It's another common startup with a 3.2 million print run worth around $2 over face value. Okay, so another common star note, $2 over face value. He says a common star note's worth three bucks. Once again, he did a whole paragraph on how I said he called it three dollars over face value when he actually said two dollars over face value three dollars total okay somebody is a psychopath all right now let's do a recap of the hunt overall it was a pretty good hunt we had 12 finds out of 10 bundles we had two star notes with 3.2 million print runs one star note with 800,000 print run two star notes with a 640,000 print run three famous date or birthday notes and four fancy serial numbers and my at this point, he showed all his fines. What are all his fines worth? How much would you pay for those? Uh, Go ahead, place your guess here. What do you? What would you give him for that? Would you give him anything over face value for those at all? In my opinion, the fine of the hunt was this April 23rd, 1869, founding of the Cincinnati Red Stockings. The fine of the hunt is a non-anniversary date for the Cincinnati Red Sox. Um, so no, that's... No, it's not even the proper order, and it's a random fact. Look up April 25th and see what happened that day, you know, and, and tell me how rare that is. No, it's not. Team, this is a good one. And the reward for the best serial number was the six-of-a-kind fives. It has great eye appeal, and it's in good shape. 
it's curled there. <laughs> you can see how rough it is on the top. So it may be in better than average shape, but once again, the condition is everything when it comes to collecting notes. And he said himself, uh, if that six was a five, then it would have really been worth something. Okay, well, the six isn't a five. It's almost worth something. So how much money did we make over face value in this video? How much money did I make? That's what he said, and I'll, I will repeat that. Let's listen to that again. The number was a six of a kind fives. It has great eye appeal, and it's in good shape. So how much money did we make over face value in this video? When you ask how much money did you make, what does that imply? That implies that you sold something. Does it not? If you didn't sell anything, you didn't make any money. Um, so let, let, let's be very clear about that. If you don't sell it, you didn't make any money on it. And by him saying that, since he's implying that he sold it, I assumed he was a seller. The funny thing is, is he went through all this work and his entire book for his response, uh, and he doesn't sell anything. Can you believe that? He made this... <laughs> $40? Not quite. $81. A new record for this series. Those okay. birthday notes add up. And as always... Th so, he says that that group of notes there is worth $81. This is a $10 North Africa note, World War II emergency currency. In this condition, it grades between a 15 and a 20. In a 20, this note books out at $90. Would you rather have this $10 silver certificate, North Africa emergency currency, for $81? Or do you want all that crap? Which is going to be worth more in 10 years? This or that? Not into emergency currency? Fine. Check this out. Here's a $1 bill from the Civil War. You can see here, 1862. And it has the green overprint. This bill in this condition, easily worth between $75 and $100. Notice how I said in this condition, because condition matters. Would you rather have a note from 1862 for $81? Or would you rather have that crap? Which is the better investment? Remember, every single note that he's talking here for fancy serial numbers, they're printing more of. Every new series that comes out, they're printing more. So in 20 years, there's going to be even more of those notes. And as far as the star notes go, with the billions of star notes that are currently circulating, it's going to take an awful long time for that number to dwindle, especially since everybody is saving them now that they know that they are no longer going to be found. So in 20 years, I expect everything in this stack to be worth the exact same amount it is today. This, this will probably go up in value. This, this will probably go up in value. That makes these a much better investment, as he says, since he's an investor. All right. I'm not going to bore you with all of this stuff. I will just give you the rundown. I said, please don't help scam people. He puts out videos like this saying that this stuff is worth money. So now people that are trying to scam other people can use this going, look, watch this video. He says right there, it's worth this much. No, it's not. I'm not even going to go into that. What I do want to tackle is I want to see if I missed any of his questions. Okay. Cause he put in a bunch of questions here. So here, question one. Could you please pull up eBay sales on your computer, look at literally everything here? No. Can I look up everything? No. But you know what I will do? I will pull up eBay sales. Here we go. First item, I, I listed trinary, okay? The first item listed, matching trinaries. Oh, you mean like the stuff that I find? You mean like these? The, you know, matching the numbers? Oh, okay. Sold for $20. Okay, clearly not what he's talking about. He's talking about, oh, this is a true trinary. And they don't even list it at that. And it sold for $1.25. So that's one. Look at the date, October 24th. So that's one that sold on this particular day. Here he's got six of a kind. Uh, well, he says six of a kind is worth more. So if you can call something anything other than a trinary, 
then that's what it goes for. Nobody bought this because it's a trinary. They bought it for being six of a kind, which is still worthless, but regardless, we're still only counting the one trinary that sold. Uh, doubles, triples, uh, he, uh, double triples, okay? So 888000, that's how this one is being sold. Does it happen to be a trinary? Yes. So that one doesn't count. A radar. Radars are actually worth money. Radars are a 1 in 10,000 find. Radars sell for about 20 bucks. What do you know? Sold for 20 bucks. I wanted to double check something here. This guy here sold the trinary for $1.25 plus $4.79 shipping. So it costs $6. He scammed somebody out of $6 for that note. All right, so here's the radar selling for 20 bucks. Okay, radars are 1 in 10,000. Trinaries, you find... I find, on average, 7 per 1,000, which means I would find 70 per 10,000. So 1 in 10,000 uh, 10, or 70 per 10,000. You can see how one is worth much more than the other. Uh, four in a row. Well, we're not talking about four in a row, so that doesn't count. True, uh, near true binary. Okay, so they're using the true binary as something there to up the price on that one. What do we got here? Five in a row, so that's not counted there. And here we've got uh, 2021 trinary fancy serial number. Um, they don't say that it's a low number, so we'll count that. That's two. And then this is five of a kind, so that's not it. And this one here is five bucks, so that's three. And then we get to the next day. So three trinaries sold. Now, one of the, one of the people that likes to tout this stuff uh, is a guy by the name of Blue Ridge Silverhound. Maybe you've heard of Blue Ridge Silverhound. Blue Ridge Silverhound is over 100,000 subscribers. Imagine telling 100,000 people that trinaries are worth some money. Imagine showing 100,000 people sales like this. And imagine doing that and saying, look at what you can get when you sell your stuff like this. Do you think that might influence people to buy it a little bit? Do you think so? Or what if Blue Ridge Silverhound used that huge podium he has to tell everybody how common these are and to tell people that they aren't actually worth anything? But he doesn't do that. So 100,000 subscribers. Now, when it comes to views, I bet only about half of his views come from his actual subscribers. Plenty of people will watch his stuff and not subscribe. I'm a, I'm a, a creator as well. I, I understand how that works. Which means he's seeing many, many, many more different people than 100,000. Okay? What if only 1 in 10 people that watch his stuff subscribe? That means he showed a million people this, okay? If you tell a million people that a trinary is worth some money, somebody's going to buy one because there's plenty of stupid people in this country. So, no, that proves nothing that three people got suckered today into buying these out of the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, that heard that these might be worth something. Most people are smart enough to understand they aren't worth anything. All right, so now what do we got here? So there, that's number one. I brought that up. I demonstrated why his values are useless. Demonstrate how the 2022 Green Guide to Fancy Serial Numbers is both canon. Uh, it's canon because it tells you exactly how many you can find. It tells you the rarity. And if it's not rare, it's not worth anything. If it's not rare, go find it yourself. He likes to say that people don't have time to hunt for fancy serial numbers. You don't have time for your hobby, is what he's saying. Well, then that's not a hobby. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 that's, that's not how it works. You have a hobby for something to do that's fun. And if you don't have time to do your fun thing, then just buying the reward for doing the hunt, that, I mean, that's just not... I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. All right, so that's number two. Number three, I wish he would have broke them down at some point. Uh, I don't even see a number three on here. I'm trying not to read it all because it's insane, but you guys can read it. Uh, number four, I have a good friend that recently sold a $20 bill with three consecutive twos and three consecutive nines to a dealer at a coin show. I don't know what dealer it was. I don't know if the person had a brick and mortar. I don't know if this was just some scammer that likes to throw stuff up on eBay. So I don't care why somebody, why one person bought that. I would never buy that. Nobody that watches my channel would ever pay $30 for a note that has 222333 on it. 
So no, I, I cannot explain why somebody did that. I have no idea why. Uh, he sold it online for a profit. Yeah, well, there's a sucker born every minute. That doesn't mean it's worth that. You can sell anything for any price you want. That doesn't prove value. Uh, let's see. Explain to your viewers. Uh, explain to your viewers that your serial number book is more accurate than eBay sales. Absolutely, hundred uh, percent. I know that's the. I know that's the case because I just showed you the errors to start this whole video off. We looked at the errors. Here's your eBay sold price. $5. So according to eBay's sales, this is worth five bucks, according to him, because eBay sales are the end all be all. So yeah, clearly, um, eBay sales are not accurate. Clearly. Uh, six, explain to your viewers why star notes are not going up in value. I did. I compared them to the web notes. Web notes went up $15 over 30 years, and there's only 300 million of them. There are billions of stars. It's going to take a lot longer for that to go up in value. So that was easy. Seven, please find in the video where I said a regular star note 3.2 million is, part, is worth $3 over face value. Covered that already. The very first note he showed was a common note that he said was worth $2 over face value, $3 overall. Once again, if $1 is the make or break, then you're in the wrong business. All right, uh, number eight, explain to your viewers that the value isn't arbitrary based on an, on opinion, but is a universal, unchanging standard. Uh, yeah, one person may want a particular number for a random reason, whatever that reason is. Um, if someone died on a specific date and they want a note to commemorate them, that doesn't mean that everybody on the planet thinks that that note is worth something. Okay, that means that one person. So if you show that one note and tell everybody that... Because the Cincinnati red stockings were formed on this day, that note is worth $20. No. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not worth that at all. It's worth that to one person who would be interested in that particular type of thing. But that does not mean that that person will ever find you to buy that note. And if that person does buy that note, it doesn't mean that he will ever be able to sell it to anybody else because it's such a small fraction of a customer base. So that covers that. Uh, explain to your viewers why you assume that I'm either a collector or a dealer. Because uh, you're telling price and you're telling people that this is how much money you made. And in order to make the money, you have to sell something. So that's why that that's why you come across as a seller. There, that was easy. Uh, let's see, what's next? That was nine. Is there a number 10 in here? There's 11. Uh, I don't even see a 10 on here. So we won't go there. 11, show your viewers the portion of my video where I said a note, not a print run, is rare. Okay, I did. I made sure to talk about when he said rare. Uh, 12. Have you heard of the Cherry Picker's Guide to Rare Dye Varieties and Strike It Rich with Pocket Change? Have I heard of those? Here's Strike It Rich with Pocket Change. Cherry Picker's Guide, Cherry Picker's Guide. Yes, I have completely have, not only do I not collect coins, but I have those books. So yes, I've heard of them. Uh, if you want to ask me coin collecting questions, I can't answer them. Can't answer them at all. I can't answer paper money questions. And when this book tells you the rarity, that's a fact. Those are hardcore numbers. That's pure statistics. Value? Don't care. Don't care what this book says the value is. I know the rarity because this book this book tells you the rarity. You want to talk about errors? Here, here's the paper money version of the cherry picker's guide. Here's about errors. And what you're going to find out is for all the errors that are in these books, you don't need a loop. You don't need to put it under a microscope. Um, the errors are stuff that when something happens, the BEP pulls. And because it doesn't happen that often to begin with, there aren't many out there. And because the BEP pulls errors, that means there's even fewer of them in circulation. So when those errors actually are found in circulation, they're worth a ton of money. But there are things that happen on a note because the printing process is sloppy. And sloppy printing isn't necessarily an error. When they cut notes, sometimes they are cut off-center. As long as it doesn't interfere with the print, not an error. 
Uh, so there's your cherry pickers guide. I don't care about the rest of that sentence. 13, explain to your viewers that you didn't know the guy from Change is Good specializes in a pester ma I don't even know what the fuck, an argument. Uh, of course, you may need to look up the definition of those two. Don't care. What What do I care about that? Uh, that, that, that's, that has nothing to do with anything. That has to do with the fact that you're a psychopath. Uh, 14, back to your original point, please demonstrate how I scam people by sharing what recent eBay sales are. Easy. People are touting notes to have value that don't have value. And by you reinforcing that idea, you are helping scam people. Whether you sell your notes for that price or not, you are telling people that those notes are worth that and you're basing it off of eBay sales. You're basing it off of other people being scammed. I say it all the time. No dealer would ever buy this stuff because it's so common. Why do you spend all this time looking for that stuff and trying to express value for it rather than telling people how easy it is to find? Instead of trying to help scammers define value on notes that are just ridiculously common, why don't you tell people how you go about getting the notes that you search? Why don't you be friendly to collectors instead of destroying future collectors by getting them to spend money on garbage? Uh, I think I covered that one. Uh, 15. Complain to your viewers about how long my response is. Uh, how I have no life and apparently have nothing better to do. I don't have to. And edit, <laughs> then edit out my response due to timing issues. Nope, we're pushing over an hour on this video. And if anybody wants to read this, here it is. Here was my reply. You want to read that? Go ahead. Let's go here again. I will stop here. If you want to pause it, you can read this. And then I will scroll down here. You can pause it and read the rest. And then I will scroll down here. There's my reply. And of course, he wants to go even further. So... Once again, here's the psychopath, just pausing it there, and then you can read the rest of it right there. I mean, total, total psychopath. What what else what else could possibly be said? And then here's the last portion. So no, I, I I'll be honest. As he replied, I read like three sentences and just I couldn't handle it anymore because he's a psychopath. His entire video was four minutes and thirty one seconds long, and he spent hours writing all that stuff. Um no other word than psychopath. No other word. Guys, I know this is a ridiculously long video. I didn't plan on doing this. I watched a four minute long YouTube video and got a huge tirade from a psychopath. <laughs> I don't know what else. There's no other definitions, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me your definition of this. Psychopath. Oh, sorry. There's still more. Okay. He's a psychopath. Don't know what else to say. All right, guys. I know it was long. If you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Thanks for watching if you made it this far, and I'll see you next time.